Today we're going over what you should be looking for in a gaming laptop, depending on which types of games you play. I'm not going to go too in depth into each specification as that can get confusing for the average consumer, instead we'll be looking at it from a high level. Today, the laptop I'll be using is the Aura 7 from Gigabyte. This laptop will make a good reference to the points I'm making in the video. The Aura 7 is running the latest version of Windows 10 and uses the 10th gen Intel 10750H, a GeForce RTX 2060, a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and more. I'll get more into the specs later on in the video but let's get into which genres we'll be covering today. We won't be covering every genre as that would take too much time, instead we'll be looking at a few basic and popular genres to get started. Now when it comes to laptop specifications, there's a few things to consider. We have the display, CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage. Specifications like battery life won't be covered as for gaming you should always have your laptop plugged in anyways and the type of battery life you'll need for that won't be dependent on the type of games you play but instead what your preferences are for having a laptop in general. Now let's go over competitive and FPS games. FPS stands for first person shooters. Playing FPS is primarily competitive for the most part. Let's take Call of Duty Modern Warfare for example. The first thing you'll want is a high frame rate. Now for a lot of competitive games players will actually turn down the resolution and other graphical options. A high refresh display is important for this. I would recommend at least 120 to 144 Hz as a refresh rate at a minimum. When it comes to color accuracy, that doesn't matter so much. You'll be fine using a TN or VA panel. IPS is always nice, but most FPS and competitive games don't need it. To ensure a high frame rate, you can use a lower end CPU and GPU, except if it's Modern Warfare, as a lot of these competitive games are highly optimized. Look at CSGO and Rainbow Six Siege, for example. You'll have to research through the different laptop grade CPU CPUs and GPUs and their respective benchmarks to find your best answer, but in this Gigabyte Aura 7 laptop, there is an Intel 10750H, which is a 6-core 12-thread CPU with clock speed from 2.6 GHz to 4.5 GHz. This is about the mid-range level for laptop CPUs and a great place to start when looking for the right CPU for you. Now, when looking for the right laptop GPU, the GTX 1660 Ti and RTX 2060 are another good place to start as they are about in the mid-range for a laptop GPU. Also, having a decent amount of RAM is important. 8 gigabytes is mostly standard for entry level laptops, but 16 gigabytes is always mostly the norm and recommended to run almost any game. But for most competitive FPS titles, you won't need more than 8 as a necessity. Now let's talk open world games. A lot of open world games like Grand Theft Auto, Fallout, No Man's Sky, and others are going to rely on a good amount of resources to load the world in the game. A high refresh rate isn't as important in this case. Having over 100 hertz is always nice, but not an absolute necessity like competitive games have. Color accuracy on the other hand I believe is more important. Having a VA or IPS panel or display would be ideal in this situation. The large open worlds are crafted with their own art style and beauty of its own and is one of the main drawing points of an open world game where immersion is key. Having an SSD is also important. Open world games pull a ton of resources to render their environment. That's why games like GTA take so long to load. Installing these types of games on SSD can make a significant difference, but it is not a necessity to run the game well as these types of games can take up a significant portion of your storage space. The next thing to look at is a CPU and GPU. Some older open world games will run on lower specs no problem and are well optimized. However, that isn't a guarantee for all open world games. At least with most first person shooter games, a lot of them are highly optimized because of how widely adopted and how widely played they are. They have to be highly optimized. I would recommend mid-tier CPU and GPUs for your laptop purchase to keep things running smoothly for the time to come. Also, 8 to 16 gigs of RAM is going to be my recommendation for most types of games anyway, so we're just going to stick to that for the entirety of this video. One of the last types of games we're going to look at is racing style games. Some are open world, others are more linear, and some are simulators. It's hard to address all the different styles, but there are similarities in some of these laptop specs I would recommend. A high refresh rate display and a high color accuracy. I would recommend a high refresh rate to show the smoothness of the game at high speeds. So you want to make sure even at high speeds things aren't looking choppy and color accuracy to properly display the cars in the game. Having a decent GPU and CPU will matter for this as some of these can be decently demanding where in FPS and competitive games you can get mostly away with a lower tier CPU and GPU combination. I would recommend at least mid-range for these types of games. It is fairly popular to crank up the graphical settings to get as realistic with the cars in the game as possible so I would focus on getting a decent GPU over the CPU. Now today I have a laptop that can meet most of these requirements without being too expensive. The new Gigabyte Aura 7 laptop. This is an all-around 
mid-range laptop that will suit almost any of your gaming needs. You have a 10th gen Intel 10750H with 6 cores, 12 threads, and boosts up to 4.5 gigahertz, and an RTX 2060, which right now will run any game you throw at it with decent graphical settings, not to mention it has ray tracing in case you want a higher visual fidelity. It also has a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, and a beautiful 17.3 inch 1080p 144Hz IPS display. So you get color accuracy, high frame rates, and a decent size screen to see it all, plus a little sprinkle of ray tracing in case you want it. This laptop fits the need to play almost any game and play it well without compromising and without breaking the wallet too much at around $1,400. And if this version is too expensive, there's a version with the GTX 1660 Ti and 1650. The Aura 7 laptop blends gaming with a professional aesthetic and value performance, so make sure to check it out in the description below. If you want to see more videos like this one and more, consider checking out the rest of the channel and subscribing. I'm JD, and thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.